Hello dear students and welcome to the next lesson. Today we look at quadratic functions. What do you need to understand for this lesson? You should have seen the lesson Introduction to Linear Functions so that you know what f of x means. It's also helpful if you have seen the lesson on linear functions in normal form. Because then you know that this m here in front is the slope, and this n here indicates the intersection with the y-axis. If you know all that, we can start with quadratic functions. You can see that the word quad is hidden by the word quadratic. And this quadrilateral which is a square will help us now. First we label the sides, the width is 1 meter and the length is also 1 meter. And you should remember that if we want to calculate this area here, we multiply both sides together, which is 1 meter times 1 meter. Let's put that in a table over here. So we have sides of 1 meter each, and 1 meter times 1 meter is 1 squared in square meters. And 1 squared is of course 1, so at 1 meter we get 1 square meter of area. Now, what if we had 2 meters over here? Let's take a look. Then we have 2 meters by 2 meters. And we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4 tiles. So 4 square meters total. We can also add this to the table. 2 meters is of course 2 squared, and then square meters. And 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. At 2 meters we have 4 square meters. Let's do it with 3 meters. If we extend this square, now we have 3 times 3 meters, and as you can see, there are a total of 9 tiles. Let's enter this. 3 meters gives 3 squared square meters, and 3 times 3 is 9 square meters. So, if we were to do that now with 4 meters, we would have 16 square meters and so on and so forth. Let's change this table here. Let's say this length here, this 3 meters, now is some unknown x. So length becomes x. And over here, of course. And now we say that the area is made up of x times x, and x times x is x squared. And now we will do something else, we say that's not just x squared, but now that's a function. That's f of x equals x squared. We say this x squared should now be a function. Input the side, and we get the area. And now we draw this thing in a coordinate system. And to make our values more accurate, let's take a few more here, such as 0 meters. What is 0 squared? Quite simply, 0. So 0 square meters. Next we take 0 0.5 meters, and 0 0.5 squared, is 0 0.25. Then we add 1.5, and 1.5 squared gives 2.25. And last we take another 2.5 and a side length of 2.5 gives 6.25 square meters. So now we enter our x's, and our y's here in the coordinate system. So for 0 we get 0 square meters, we enter that. Next we take 0 0.5 and 0 0.25. 1 and 1. 1 1.5 and 2.25. 2 and 4. 2.5 and 6.25. And finally 3 and 9. Now if we connect all these points together, we realize the following. There is something like a curve. That means, our function, in contrast to linear functions which were always straight, is now curved. And if we look at the values over here again for x, and we know that this coordinate system also has negative ranges, so here for x, the axis goes to the left, then we would have to use negative values here, such as negative 
and at negative 0.5 times negative 0.5 we get positive 0.25. If we input negative 1 for x here, then we know negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 again. And if we make 1.5 here negative, then negative times negative again gives positive. This is going on, and that means we have negative x values now. But the values over here have stayed the same for y. Let's take that into the coordinate system. So that means negative 0.5 has 0.25. And negative 1 has 1. Negative 1.5 has 2.25. For negative 2 we have 4. Negative 2.5 and 6.25. And negative 3 and 9. We mark on our graph again and realize that it behaves just like the one on the other side. And if we now look at the y-axis, to the right and to the left, we notice, as for example here at height 4, that we have a distance of 2 to the right. And that we have a distance of 2 to the left. That is, the y-axis always has the same distance from the right and left to the graph. And that's what we call axisymmetric, where sim comes from Greek and means equal. And metrical from matria, the measure. The meaning of the word is equal measure. And we find this here on both sides of the y-axis. The graph of our function is called a parabola. Parabola comes from Greek and means parable or comparison. Of course, you can see it, comparing the left side and the right side shows that they are the same. Good, let's examine our parabola a bit more closely. So, again, our function equation was f of x equals x squared. What can we do with it? We have seen linear functions, we can now, for example, add a plus 1 here. Then each value is increased by 1, so 0 goes to 1, this value at 1 was 1, which goes to 2 and so on. So everything moves 1 up. And if we were to calculate plus 2 now, the graph would have to be moved up by 2. And the same is valid, if we subtract 1, and so on. Now maybe one of you might wonder. What happens if we take the x squared here and now multiply a value in front of it? So actually here is 1 times x squared, because that's the same as x squared. And instead, we could now write 2 times x squared. What is happening now? Let's look at a few more values for x, 0, 1 and 2. Let's see what happens. x squared, so here we have 0 squared is again 0, and 0 times 2 is 0. Now x is 1, then we have 1 squared, of course is 1, times 2 is 2. And 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. If we do that and enter the values here on the right in the coordinate system, it looks like this. And if we take negative values for x now, then we get that part. For a better illustration, let's take a look at an example program that you can find on our website. Here you can move the parabola up and down and the height accordingly is read off on the y-axis. Let's go back to 0, and here you see that there is, 1x squared plus 0, and that is of course x squared, our normal parabola. If we now use the mouse to click and move up, we stretch the parabola, and you see, down at x squared the value gets higher and higher. Once we move the mouse below a value of 1x squared, we will squeeze it. The values rise much slower. And if we now push the parabola down so far that we get to 0x squared, right, then we get 0 times x squared is 0 plus 0 is 0. Then we have a constant function which we already discussed in the lesson about linear functions. 